Chapter nine, each of us is fascinating, part two. When they say, don't I know you? Say no. When they invite you to the party, remember what parties are like before answering. Someone telling you in a loud voice they once wrote a poem. Greasy sausage balls on a paper plate. Then reply. If they say we should get together, say why? It's not that you don't love them anymore. You're trying to remember something too important to forget. Trees or the monastery bell at twilight. Tell them you have a new project. It will never be finished. When someone recognizes you in a grocery store, nod briefly and become a cabbage. When someone you haven't seen in 10 years appears at the door, don't start singing all your new songs. You will never catch up. Walk around feeling like a leaf. Know you could tumble any second. Then decide what to do with your time. Naomi Shehab Nye. Not always part of the tribe. I shared this poem with my sister and was surprised when she thought the poem was incredibly sad. Sad had never occurred to me. I thought the poem should be titled The Artist's Manifesto. My real discovery was that I always assumed my sister understood me when in fact, she only understood me up to a point. I'm sharing this because I think it will sound familiar. We love the people who are our tribe and they may love us dearly, but that doesn't mean we understand each other. Being called to make art isn't always easy, rewarding or lighthearted. Sometimes it distances us from other people especially if it isn't a story they recognize or they don't get. But that can't stop us from making. Caring enough to be clear. If you completed the work proposed in the last chapter, you came face to face with your past. Many of us had wonderful, encouraging parents. Many of us didn't. Or our parents were conflicted. In any event, we're here. Making sense or recognizing the part of your story will never make sense is at least a healing. Maybe you recognize parents who did the best they could with what they had, even if it was not enough. Maybe you finally understand why people behaved the way they did. Maybe you deserve to be totally pissed off about something that happened to you, but you decide carrying the burden around is compromising your stamina. Maybe it's time to lay that burden down so you have more energy to make art. Or maybe it's time to use your angry energy to make art that can heal you. Which brings us to forgiveness, perhaps a stretch as a topic within the context of creative strength training, but I think it's relevant. May I point out that no one is able to demand forgiveness. Forgiveness can only be offered and so, writing your story is an opportunity to rebelliously forgive. Free up your energy and spend it making meaningful and ecstatic art, whatever that looks like to you. Life here in Earth School is different for each of us. No matter what your experience is or has been, the best thing you can do is keep writing and making. Another use of your history process content story Share it with someone else in order to connect authentically with them. Say to someone you love, respect, or are in a relationship with, hey, I wrote this because of a book I read and I want you to read it. The story is there in plain writing and it's an opportunity to open up a discussion impersonally. When something's on paper, the reader is less likely to take it personally. The verbal posturing isn't a factor. And for those of you who have figured out who your support staff is, nothing can be better than sharing what you've written so it can be celebrated. You might even encourage a friend to write his or her own version of history, process, and content. And yeah, you may not be ready to share what you're writing. Maybe you don't wanna put it out there to the world, but at least you know what's what. And knowing what's what yourself, that's huge.